All right then, so far we know how to make images, how to run images to spin up a container, and also how to add tags to the images that we make. Now remember, once an image is made, it becomes read only, meaning that if you change your application in any way, whether it be changing the source code or adding new dependencies, you have to then rebuild a new image based on those changes. So I can demonstrate this. I've already got this my app image created and I already created a container to run that image in the last lesson. And we can see that container if I type Docker PS and then the A flag and then hit enter. So we can see the container, but it's not currently running, right? I stopped it. So to start a container that's already been made, we can use the command Docker start and then whatever the container is called. So. In my case, that's my app underscore C. So I can type that at the end. And then if I hit enter, this is going to start the exact container up again, which is based on the my app image. Now, the difference between Docker start and Docker run, by the way, which is what we previously used to run an image in a container, is that Docker run will always run the image via a brand new container. So it will make a completely new one from scratch. But Docker start is going to take a container that's already been made and then start that up again. So it doesn't create a new one. In our case, all we need to do is start up the container again that we already created, so we use docker start. So then this is going to start the container again, and notice that it doesn't block the terminal because by default, docker start starts the container in detached mode. Anyway, this container is running now, and it's based on the image we created, which includes this application, right? Now let me make a change to something in the application. For example, inside app.js, I could change the console log to say something else. I could just add a load of full stops on the end. Now, if I stop the container again by saying in the terminal docker stop and then whatever the container is called, my app underscore C in my case, then it's going to stop the container, right? So just wait for that to, uh, to fully stop. And then when it has fully stopped, you can run the container again by saying docker start my app underscore C. So when we do that, notice, first of all, in the terminal, it still says the original message. Now, it hasn't picked up the change that I just made to the code because we just changed that console log and it's not showing that down here in the terminal. So it's not picked up that change, right? Even though we stopped the container and we restarted it, it's not picked up that change that we made to the app.js file. And that's not a bug. It's completely correct. Think about it. We already created the image being run by this container in the last lesson based on the code in the app.js file at that point in time. And once we created that image, it becomes read only. So if we change our application source code, it doesn't then update the image. And since the image doesn't update, then the container is still running that old image, right? That older code inside the image. So to see the changes, we'd first have to build a completely new image based on our change to the code. And then we would have to run that image in a new container to see the changes. Now, this might seem like a long winded way of working if we're developing an application and making changes all the time. Unfortunately, there's a way around this by using something called volumes. So volumes are a feature of Docker that allow us to specify folders on our host computer that can be made available to running containers. And we can map those folders on our host computer to specific folders inside the container. So that if something changed in those folders on our computer, that change would also be reflected in the folders we map to in the container. For example, we could map our entire project folder, the API folder, to the app folder in our container, which is where all the source files are inside the container because we specified that in the Docker file, right? Right here. And that means if a file is created, deleted or changed in this API directory on our computer, that change would automatically be reflected in the same directory inside the container. And that means that if I have a container running this application and we use a volume to map this directory to the app directory in the container, and then I edit this app.js file, that change would be reflected in the app.js file inside the container as well. And so we'd see that update without having to build a new image. And in fact, everything that's inside this project folder would be mirrored automatically in the app folder in the container. So this is a way that we can make changes to the project and preview those changes without having to build new images all of the time. Now, one important thing to note about this is that the image itself 
does not change, all right? Volumes just give us a way to map directories between containers and the host computer. And the image that the container is running doesn't change at all. So if we wanted to update the image to share with others or to create new containers, then you'd have to rebuild the image using Docker build again. But just while you're testing or developing your application, volumes can be useful for that directory mapping between the project itself and the container so that we can see the changes that we make without rebuilding anything. So that's a bit of theory behind volumes, but how do we implement them? Well, we can make them just by adding a simple flag to the run command. But before we do that, I want to make a quick change to the project and the Docker file. So what I'd like to do is, first of all, install Nodemon globally inside the image. So I'm going to do that in the Docker file near the top, just above the work directory instruction. And to do that, I can just say run. And then the thing I want to run is npm install and then hyphen G to mean we want to install something globally and then Nodemon. So the hyphen G means, like I said, install something globally in the image or container. Now, that means that we can use the Nodemon command to start our application without any issues inside the container as well. Now, Nodemon is a package for Node applications that basically watches files for changes and then restarts the server when it detects a change. And instead of the startup command then being node app.js, it can now be nodemon app.js instead. And we can use that nodemon command inside the container because we installed nodemon as a global dependency inside it. And all that's going to do is watch any JavaScript or JSON files inside the container and basically restart the server when it detects one. Because without Nodemon, it wouldn't do that. And even with a volume set up to mirror any changes that we make, the server wouldn't reflect the change really until the server's been restarted. So that's what Nodemon is going to do for us. Restart the server automatically when it detects changes in the container, basically. Now, instead of writing that Nodemon command down here in the Docker file directly, I'm going to just basically use a script in the package.json file. And if we just head to that file, I've already created it and you can add this in. So the script is called dev and then the command is just Nodemon and then hyphen L app.js. Now this hyphen L right here basically alters the way that Nodemon works with Docker and you need this inside the script if you're working on Windows, otherwise it won't work, okay? So like I said, that just basically is gonna change how Nodemon watches for changes. And when we're working with containers on Windows, we need that extra flag, all right? So now, back in the Docker file, I can update the command at the bottom so that it runs that dev script that you just saw. And the way we do that is by saying npm, first of all, then after that, run to run a script and then we need also a third string in the array which is going to be the name of the script that we want to run and in our case that is dev so now this means it's going to run this dev script inside the package.json file which is just nodemon then the l flag and then app.js and we could have just easily added that directly in the docker file instead but i like to keep my scripts inside the package.json file so now, when we build the image, we'll have Nodemon installed on the image globally. And this new command to run the app is going to watch for changes so that it can restart the server whenever it detects a change. OK, now I don't want to make this a big lesson about Nodemon. I want to stick to Docker. But if you want to learn more about Nodemon, then I talk about it extensively in my Node.js course. So I'll leave the link to that down below the video. And by the way, Nodemon is a tool that we use during development to make it easier to see changes as we make them. And when you build your application for production, it's probably not something you'd really need. But what I'm going to do now is make a new image based on these changes we've just made to the Docker file and the package.json. So in the terminal, I'm going to type Docker and then build and then hyphen T to give this a name. And we're going to call it my app. And then as a tag, I'm also going to say maybe Nodemon to be the version because we've just added Nodemon. And then after that, a dot. Then I can hit enter to create this image. All right, so now if I run this image, everything so far should be the same, right? So let me do that by saying down here, docker run, and then we're gonna give this container a name, so double dash name, and then I'm gonna call this my app underscore C for container. Then again, underscore nodemon, because this time we're using nodemon. Then after that, we'll use the p flag 
to set up our ports and then it's going to be 4000 to 4000 and then finally the image that we actually want to run which is my app and then a specific version of the image so colon and then nodemon which is the version we just made i'm also going to add one more flag to this which we've not seen yet which is hyphen rm and that's going to go before the name of the image remember all of the options go before the image and this stands for remove and what this does is remove or delete the container once we stop it later on so that way we're not storing the container afterwards when we don't need it anyway then i can hit enter to run the container and we should see a load of nodemon output in the terminal once this is done and in the browser everything works as normal hallelujah so all we've done is use nodemon now to run the node app in the container and everything still works the same as before but this time nodemon will be watching for changes to the app.js file in the container and then it will restart the server when it detects one without nodemon it wouldn't do that so back in our project let's make a change to the app.js file i'm just going to change the json that we send back a little bit nothing major and now if we save it that's when nodemon is meant to restart the server so that change can be seen if we make a request to this endpoint right but in the browser if i refresh i'm still getting the old json response even though nodemon is meant to be restarting the server with that fresh code change that we just made but remember nodemon is watching the files in the container and the app.js file in the container hasn't actually changed it's only the app.js file on our computer that's changed not inside the container itself and that's why nodemon isn't restarting the server and why we don't see this change and this is where volumes are going to come into play now so what we'd like to do is make it so that we can map our project folder on our computer to the app folder in the container which contains all the same files as here so that when something changes inside this project folder on our computer that change is kind of propagated to the container for example if i was to change the app file over here i'd want it to change the app file in the container to match and that way nodemon would pick up on that file change in the container and then restart the server for us so we do this like i said by mapping this project folder this api folder to the app folder in the container where all the source code is found and we do it with the help of volumes because that's what they can do they can map folders on our computer to folders in the container so first of all i want to stop the container that we're currently running and to do that i'm going to open up a different terminal window and type docker stop and then the name of the container which in our case is my app underscore c underscore nodemon and then we can hit enter and remember because we added that remove flag it's going to delete the container automatically when it stops it as well right all right so now i want to start up a new container running the image again but this time i also want to start it with the volume set up as well so let me first of all just go up to get the previous run command that we had and then we can just make changes to this so currently we give the container a name, we set up the port mapping, we add the remove flag and we specify the image. But we also now want to add the volumes to this to map our local project folder to the container app folder. Now the way we do that is by adding the volume flag which is just hyphen V. And after that we can configure the volume itself. And remember do this before the image name. So we want to map one folder on our computer to a folder in the container, right? And we do that by first of all, specifying the absolute path on our computer to our project folder right here. And we can easily get that by right clicking over here and selecting copy path, not relative path, just copy path to get an absolute path, which is much longer. So now let's paste that path down here. All right, so after we have that path, we can add a colon and then specify a path to the folder we want to map in the container itself. So that's just going to be the app folder, right? Where all the project files are on the container. So I can just say forward slash app and that's it. This volume is now going to map our project folder on our computer to the app folder in the container. And now when the container runs, it's basically going to be kept in sync with this project folder on our computer. So if something changes over here in our project or is at any point different to what's in the container, then that change is going to be propagated over to the container. Now, there is one small problem with this. 
If we were to delete the node modules folder, which we don't really need over here anyway locally, then this mapping would mean that the node modules folder in the container would be removed as well. Because remember, everything in the app folder in the container would now be kept in sync with this project folder. And that would cause a problem because the container needs those dependencies like Express inside the node modules folder for the app to work. So this volume and folder mapping gives us that problem of the node modules folder in the container potentially being deleted if something happens to it outside over here. And we need a way now to have this volume still mapping our folder over here so that any other changes to the application code still get propagated to the container, like a change in the app.js file, for example, but so it also doesn't affect the node modules folder in the container as well if something happens to it out here. And the way we can do this is by adding another volume, this time called an anonymous volume. And that extra anonymous volume would map the containers node modules folder to somewhere else on our computer managed by Docker. So let me first add this in and then I'll explain it. So after the first volume, you want to create another volume. So again, hyphen V. And then this time we just say forward slash app forward slash node underscore modules. And that's pretty much it. So this volume specifies the location of the node modules folder inside the container itself when it's running. And it doesn't map that folder to another specific folder on our computer like the first volume did. Instead, it's mapped to a folder managed by Docker somewhere on our computer, right? And the contents of that folder will persist even when the container stops. And then the next time the same container starts again, its node modules folder is still mapped to that same folder managed by Docker. And the effect of this, of adding that extra volume, means that it overrides the previous one, but only for this node modules folder. And the reason it does that is because its path in the container is more specific than the previous one. So the previous volume will still map everything else in the app folder in the container to our project directory over here, but not the node modules one, because now we have a volume with a more specific path for managing that folder, right? I hope that kind of makes sense. Now, I know all this seems a bit long-winded for what is ultimately just basically getting live changes when we're developing, but later on, we'll look at something called Docker Compose, which enables us to do all of this setup much easier. Anyway, let's try running this now and see if it works. So at the minute, everything does still work in the browser and we can see that we get this JSON response. Awesome. Now in the app.js file, let's just change the JSON response a little bit and then we can save the file again. And when we do that, now we should maybe see in the terminal Nodemon restarting the server in the container. So that looks promising. And now in the browser, if we refresh this request, hopefully you can see the new JSON data sent back, which reflects that change we just made in the code. Awesome. Phew. All right then. So this might again seem like a lot of work for what is essentially just a way of previewing our code changes right away in the container. But there are two things to know. Firstly, something called Docker Compose, which we're going to look at next, makes this process much easier to manage. And secondly, this is just a small amount of extra setup needed to really take advantage of the many benefits that Docker has to offer. Anyway, next up, we'll see how to use something called Docker Compose, which makes it easier to run images and specify how they should be run, especially when you have multiple projects on the go.